Hello and welcome back, Sleepy What's It here with a very delayed Miniatures Monday video. I apologize for not having a video out the last few weeks. A few self-inflicted disasters with being sick for a little bit plus traveling meant I didn't have much time for miniature painting. Combine that with uh, contrast paints came out, so I've decided to do the obligatory hey look contrast came out video here instead of completing the Pjorks project that I've been working on. More work than I had time for, so it's thrown everything off. Um, I will be getting back to the P works probably in the next video. I do intend to finish painting those. It's just I wanted to get this video out and done and such. Um, I guess a bit of a spoiler, the dwarves, even though they were painted with contrast paints, didn't take me 15 minutes to paint the entire team. Like some people seem to attest, it took me a wee bit longer than that. So what we're going to be doing in this video is taking a look at my paint guide for the Blood Bowl uh, dwarves, the dwarf giants from Games Workshop. Bulk of this paint job was done using contrast paints or other citadel paints. I think they're, other than maybe some of the rims on the bases, this is all uh, uh, Games Workshop citadel paints all the way through. But I did lose a whole bunch of video, or it wasn't usable, so I don't have the in-between stages of painting each step along here, unfortunately. So we're just going to have to work with the finished models. I'm going to kind of describe the process I went through, hopefully in enough detail that you can understand what was going on. Anyway, let's get into this. So the first step with any painting project is to lay down your primer base layer. With the Citadel uh, contrast line, they recommend using two specific colors, Gracier and Wraithbone. Gracier being a cool gray and Wraithbone being a warm gray. These do come in rattle cans. I didn't use the rattle cans because I've had bad experiences in general with using them. Doubly combined with the weather in the area I live in is not amendable to uh, rattle can uh, painting in general, so I have an airbrush. So I actually based everything out using gray primer from Vallejo just to lay down a proper primed layer, and then used out of the pot a gray sear in Wraithbone to lay down the first base layer. I originally was picking out all the individual pieces that I needed and painting them, which took me an exceedingly long time, and then partway through I realized that everything that is not the hair on these models, I want based in gray sear to begin with, and everything that was the hair I wanted in Wraithbone. So that sped up my entire process noticeably because I was able to quickly throw down the gray sear and Wraithbone when I didn't have to worry about where it was all going, which is the strength in general of contrast, I have to say, is being able to throw it down, but at times when you can't just throw down paint, it doesn't work out nearly as well. First color that I worked on after getting my base layer done was all of the gray kind of dirty cloth I have on my models. So that's everything kind of imagining the clothing that they're wearing under the armor. So this was of course based with gray sear as I mentioned before, and then had a quick layer of uh, Space Wolf's gray uh, thrown over top of it, which is one of the new contrast paints. I didn't go in and do any highlighting or additional layering over this since this is kind of a background color, and I thought it looked relatively fine the way it was. My one complaint with this specific color is is that it is not particularly pigment dense in comparison to some of the other ones. So it has it doesn't cover anything worth a damn. So this became a problem a little bit later when I have spillover from other areas. To fix anything where there was spillover onto the cloth, I would have to rebase it with gray sear and put down more space wolf's gray, which is kind of a common theme that I'll get into a little bit more at the end of Basically, how would I have done this project differently now that I've done some work with contrast paints? The next section of these models I worked on was all the exposed skin on them. So this is the face, the, some of the hands, uh, pretty much all of the troll slayers, and then like the lower legs, calf areas on a lot of the models. This, I followed the, I think it was called the tan skin recipe from the Citadel app or and on the website. Uh, so based out using gray sear again, um, uh, shaded uh, using Gillum and Flesh, which is a new contrast color, which again was a little bit thin for my liking in comparison to some of the other ones. And it honestly came out very dirty, like burnt in the sun looking. So I then did layering using Kislev Flesh to get um, the kind of highlighted areas. So basically the original contrast became the shade on it. Overall, I thought this worked very well. The section after the uh, skin that I painted was all of the armor uh, segments. I spent a lot of time debating exactly which shade of blue from the new contrast line I was going to use for this, and eventually settled down in Arkelian green. So this was based out using Gracier, 
and then applied a layer of Arcalian Green to it. Arcalian Green is actually way more pigment dense than the previous two paints that I used. So this became a little bit of a problem. As you can see on some of the models that I pooled, especially with those kind of like larger flat areas. So I'm not the biggest fan of how this came out. Some of the models that came out really nicely on, overall I thought it came out a little bit darker than I really wanted. I should have watered it down a little bit uh, with the medium. I did go in and attempt to do some highlighting with uh, Temple Guard Blue on one model, but I didn't really like how it was going, so I decided to stop messing with it and just leave it as is and live with the paint job that I had. The next section that I worked on the models was all of the leather bits. Uh, I ended up using Saigor Brown over Gracier here. I'm not sure if that was the best pick uh, here because Saigor Brown is, again, a very pigment-rich paint. I believe that there's a more orange-brown, something like Gunther Fur or something like that. I can't remember the exact name of it, but I suspect that would have turned out a little bit better. Again, I think it worked well it, uh, for what I was doing um, because of the fact that it was right near a less pigment-dense region that clean up on the cloth was a little bit of a hassle to do. At this point, um, because I kind of had overpainted a lot of the areas I was going to come back to and redo in gold, I'd kind of done most of the body areas that I was planning on painting, so I moved on to the hair at this point, which I mentioned previously was based out using Wraithbone, which is the warm uh, light gray that they have. So for all of the hair on the model, I just applied the shade, and this is, I think, an area where the contrast paint really shows off really well because I didn't feel the need to go back in and touch it up or add any highlights or layering. I thought it was really good as is. So for the orange hair, which you see on a few of the models and especially on the Troll Slayer, I used Griffhound Orange. For the blonde hair, I used Idian Yellow. I found using that at kind of like full consistency, um, the shadows were a little bit orangey for my liking. So with that one, it's worth going through and after you put the layer on, avoiding your brush and then using that to pull out a little bit of the pooling paint so you get more of a blonde look to it. But I thought that worked really well. Uh, for the brown hair, I used Wildwood, which again, I thought looked really well. And then for black, we used Black Templar for that. So. Overall, I would say the hair is probably the number one thing out of all of these things that I painted that I think worked the best using the contrast paints. So I, I guess A plus for that. After completing the hair, the next uh, thing I did was painted all the gold on the pieces. So this is a lot of the like fists and then on some of the armor, there's additional raised gold areas and then like little skulls that appear in a variety, a variety of things. So for the areas that where there was a lot of like arcane blue or green and then there was gold there, what I actually did is I had originally painted that all through with Ar Arcalian uh, green and then I went through and rebased uh, using gray sear in those areas. And then I guess for gold in general, based out in gray sear, then I used Nazigreg yellow as the contrast layer. And then I went back through at the end and did highlighting, layering using Everland Sunset. Overall, I think the gold turned out really well. I do like how it looks as a non-metallic paint. It's not like a really hardcore with the hard contrast, but I think it works really well and it fits in very nicely. It was much faster than doing it with metallics, which I was originally start or considering starting to do, but then I realized I would have had to base it put the metallic down and just uh, do highlight, basically do a lot more work, whereas this was uh, base paint highlight much faster. So I'm happy with how it turned out. And the how metallics looked was one of the things I really wanted to investigate a little bit with these models. Since the two primary colors that I have on the model are blue and yellow, I decided for doing the accent color uh, for the gem, to go with completing the triad and painting it red. So you can envision these as being like a ruby or a garnet is kind of the color I was looking for there. So based out using gray sear for that cold uh, undertone, then I used uh, Flesh Terror's red as the contrast color. I considered using Blood Angel's red also, but I thought that was a little bit too light for what I wanted. I want that like deep, rich red. And then I did some highlighting 
uh, using Evil Sun Scarlet. I didn't try to get too fancy with it, like getting all the blend and the uh, the point highlighting the exact right place for it being a gem. Instead, I decided just to do like a simple highlighting on it. The final part of the actual models themselves that I painted was all the little skulls that are on the model. So I based out all of these bone areas using a wraith bone to get that a slightly warmer tone. Then I contrast painted using Skeleton Horde. And then I came in and did a bit of layering with Ubishati Bone because I thought that the Skeleton Horde was a little bit patchy, dirty looking. I didn't, as I said, it didn't look shaded so much as someone had thrown dirty water on it. After completing the malls themselves, I decided to try and base them out in something that was resembling a dwarven pitch. So something that's like stony astrogranity. So the base was done with astrogranite from Citadel, which is a texture paste. Then I applied a layer of basilicinum uh, gray to develop some of the shadows a little bit better. And then I went in and dry brushed it with first uh, Dawnstone. And then a final kind of bright uh, dry brush using Administrarum uh, gray. So now that we've done the painting guide portion of the video... I'm going to kind of get on to my thoughts and conclusions. Overall, I think uh, contrast paints are an interesting uh, choice. Um, they definitely can help you with specific types of models really well, but they're not a silver bullet to solve all problems. You can't just go throw your entire collection of paint. So I think they're as amazingly uh, with anything like this. It, it has some strengths and some weaknesses, and if you understand those, they can really affect how you use them. Overall, I liked the being able to base everything out in kind of a gray and not have to care about it and just throw a shade on it and then highlight it. I like that process. And overall, I do feel that this took less time for me. Specifically, it took me about 15 hours from the moment I opened the box, did all the assembly, did all the magnetizing, primed, painting, and, and then uh, varnishing. So that was 15 hours in total for everything for this project. Normally for a project like this, I would have budgeted 20 to 25 hours. I personally take about two hours per model, including assembly and everything else. It definitely did speed things up. Overall, I'm not necessarily completely happy with the paint job I ended up with. Uh, specifically, I have a lot of little kind of little white pokey bits coming out. And where this came from uh, is that because of the order I painted in, I because I was putting dense paint near a less dense paint and I knew I would have a hard time cleaning it up after I, I became a little bit hesitant in uh, filling uh, areas up to their exact edges so there's little tiny areas where the primer is showing through and because it has to be a light primer it's very noticeable admittedly this is somewhat an issue of the order I chose to paint in and uh, I guess demonstrating some flaws in my actual technical ability so I'm not necessarily blaming the paints but it's more of you have to understand what you're working with I worked out uh, uh, using a standard inside out type order that you saw here. If I was to reapproach this project, I probably would have actually sorted my colors I uh, was doing the contrast in in order of basically most dense or hardest to paint over moving up that way and worked out that. So I would do the first color and then I would have immediately gone in with the base paint and done all the cleanup work before doing the next layer and kind of worked that way so that I was able to, if need be, overspill a little bit and then move forward and clean up that way as opposed to what I ended up doing, which was doing a lot of painting and then doing a lot of cleanup and then like repainting. So basically skipping that repainting step that you would have to do a bunch of. Because broadly speaking, the less dense paints I found didn't overcome the uh, more dense paints. It was only the problem the other way around. Broadly, some of the areas like the large armor plates, I didn't necessarily like how that came out, but I could have fixed that. For doing something like Space Marines, where you can base kind of base code in an entirety of one contrast, these would be amazing for knocking those guys out really quickly because you're going to save a lot of time. For models like this that had a lot of fiddly different colors going on it it did improve things but i don't necessarily think it's the be all and end all so i think it's something worth experimenting with and i'm definitely going to continue to use them and experiment with doing things uh, like other blood wool teams and like kind of projects like that but realistically i'm going to continue using more traditional i guess or as they would call it classic technique for doing a lot of my other especially like single characters
Thank you for watching. I hope you found this video informative. If you did, please give the video a like. If you want to see more content like this, please subscribe to the channel. I upload videos weekly, sometimes on Monday. If you know anyone that might be interested in seeing how to paint this team or my broad thoughts on contrast, please share the video with them. That helps a lot. And otherwise, I look forward to seeing you in the next one.